Open your Bibles now, please, to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 11, verses 33 through 36 will be the message for today. And uh, it's entitled, What Did Jesus Say About Light and Darkness? And and let me uh, say to... Uh, you that may not have trusted Christ yet as your Lord and Savior, uh, whether you're with us in the auditorium or viewing online, you don't have assurance were you to die that you'd go to heaven. I'd love to be able to help you with that, uh, answer any questions or concerns you had uh, and uh, in a non-judgmental way from my part and just... Uh, uh, be of help to you in coming to know our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter number 11, verse number 33. The Lord Jesus said, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee, be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when uh, the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this great host uh, that's in this place today and for those viewing online. Uh, Lord, may this message uh, uh, be of special significance to all of our lives. Uh, may we be encouraged. May our lives be enhanced. May our Christian life uh, uh, come more into sync with your will for us. And Lord, if there's anyone here that uh, has not yet come to Christ, Lord, please help them to boldly join the family of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Help me to preach, Lord. I always feel so inadequate. Uh, thank you for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we come to our text for today, you might remember that Jesus had just denounced his generation as evil. Their unbelief had led to unrestrained uh, evil in their attitude and also their actions, even to the point of murdering God's prophets and and it would lead even to the point of crucifying the Lord of glory. Jesus had also said that uh, to a sign seeking people that there's only one sign uh, that uh, will have any uh, eternal significance and that will change our lives in this life. And he said, it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. And he said, if you'll accept that, your life on earth will be changed and your eternity will be settled. That is also known as the sign of the prophet Jonah. Uh, we also learn this sad, sad truth 
that in spite of the great love of God, in spite of the opportunity that God has given us to be saved and have heaven, in spite of that, multitudes remain in an unrepentant state and die lost without Christ. Now, in our text for today, Jesus addresses the need for us professing Christians to be burning and shining lights in the world. He presents our responsibilities and he presents the ruin should we make wrong decisions regarding our Christianity. Here's my guiding thoughts for the message today. First, and I'm presenting them in the form of questions. The first question is this. What are we doing with our fire? What are we doing with it? Secondly, what are we doing with our focus? And lastly, what are we doing with our, our Father? You'll see how these naturally arise from the text as we go through the message. But our first question uh, to us, what are we doing with our our fire. Notice verse number 33. Notice our text. Jesus said, no man, not, not a one, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a, a bushel, but on a candlestick, uh, that they which come in may see the light. I, I think you'll all uh, already know that uh, until electricity and until uh, batteries, of course, lighting the darkness uh, was done everywhere in the world and it had to be, as a matter of fact, it was done by literal fire. History is so long, of course, that no one really knows uh, when uh, fire, uh, so to speak, was, was discovered uh, for human use. Uh, but uh, obviously it, it has been, and it's up through the dateless past been known as a way to shine light in the darkness and, of course, to, to uh, provide warmth in, in the coldness. Uh, obviously, torches were um, the first uh, way of, of transporting fire from, from one location to, to another to be used in a variety of ways. Then, of course, came the use of fats and oils and, and waxes uh, uh, and, and finally uh, uh, the discovery and the use of gasoline, at, which uh, uh, led, of course, to lighting in our homes and in our, our dwelling places. Uh, I, as I was going through the message, I, I thought of an old song, and if you don't mind... Uh, uh, indulge me just a moment, and some of you may have heard this, but uh, it's called the old lamp lighter, and it was written in the the forties. 
And, and it was a time when, when the, the lighting in communities and in homes was via gasoline that, that, that went through and into the, the buildings and provided light during the darkness. And someone took that and wrote this song. He made the night a little brighter. Wherever he would go, the old lamp lighter of long, long ago. His snowy hair was so much whiter beneath the candle glow. The old lamp lighter of long, long ago. You'd hear the patter of his feet as he came trotting down the street. His smile would hide a lonely heart, you see. If there were sweethearts in the park, he'd pass a lamp and leave it dark. Remembering the days that used to be, for he recalls when dreams were new. He loves someone who loved him too, who walks with him along in memory. He made the night a little brighter wherever he would go. The old lamp lighter of long, long ago. Now, if you look up to the sky, you'll understand the reason why the little stars at night are all aglow. He turns them on when night is here. He turns them off when dawn is near. The little man we loved of long ago, he made the night a little brighter wherever he would go. The old lamp lighter of long, long ago. And obviously many people remember the days when, when, when that's the kind of lighting we had in the, in our cities and in our, in our homes. And, uh, uh, the, the light that they provided, the lamp lighters many years ago still needs to be provided. In our day, and, and, and may I, I say this morning that, that, that God is interested in you and I being the old lamp lighters uh, in, a, in a darkened community and in a darkened world. God wants us to, to light the lamp. The old lamp lighter. Listen. Then the light uh, mentioned in our text is said to be via candle. Uh, I understand that candles date back all the way to 1500 B.C. in ancient Egypt. And uh, fats from animals would be melted and mixed with herbs and fragrances and beeswax uh, to create candles. And uh, at, at first, candles did not use wicks. That, that, that came a little later. But aside from the amazing history of lighting uh, is the message that the Lord provides us in this text. Notice, if you will, no man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on the candlestick, that, it, that they which come in may see the light. Here's what we learn. No one lights a candle and then hides it in a secret place where no one could see. That, of course, would be nonsensical, wasn't it? <laughs> Can you um, imagine that? You, you, you gather a, uh, uh, the candles in your house and you, you go through the trouble of lighting them well. And then, then after you light them, you, you take them and, and you hide them away in some secret place where, where no one can see them. That would be a, a ridiculous thing to do, wouldn't it? But what we're learning in the text is many times people do the ridiculous. Many times people do the nonsensical. 
that hides her, hides her a light, and, and no one can see it. As Daryl sang, my mind went back to his dear parents, uh, Lawrence and Edith, how they were so faithful and stood at this pastor's side till they went to be with Jesus. We used to talk about a song, and I think they even sung that song uh, entitled, You Never Mentioned Him to Me. And it, uh, it projected the believer uh, forward in, into eternity at the, the great judgment bar of, of God. And, and there uh, the, the Christian stood and, and, and at his side there, there stood the lost person. And, and uh, when God uh, uh, reminded that lost person that he had uh, the gospel provision and he had rejected it, the, the lost man turned to this, uh, uh, this Christian and said, you never mentioned him to me. You worked with me day by day, but you never Mention him to me. We played together day by day, but you never mentioned him to me. It hid his Christian life away so well that those that rubbed shoulders with them every day did not even know that he was a Christian. Do people know that we're a Christian? Do people know? Have we shared our, our testimony of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and what a difference he's made in our life? Have we shared that with them? Have we prayed for the opportunity to share that for them? Have we asked God to open a door for an effective witness? And have we lit the lamp in a, in a dark place. It's nonsensical uh, not to. Uh, it, it defeats the whole purpose of, of, of the candle. And, and then notice, no one lights a candle and puts it under a bushel. Now, I'm not given too much uh, to the original languages, everybody that knows me knows I'm lucky to speak hillbilly, let alone Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> but uh, I understand that, that, that in the original language, this, is, this bushel uh, is, is basket. Basket. A bushel, of course, is a measure. So it has to do with the size of the basket, uh, uh, quite obviously. And um, whether the material that this uh, bushel is, is made of is basket material or, or not, we don't know for sure. It seems that it was. Or perhaps it could have been a solid material, much like a huge bowl or tub-like uh, vessel. Uh, but whatever it is, Jesus said, oh, you, you don't light a, a candle with, with fire on the top of the candle. You, you don't put your fire uh, underneath such a vessel as that. Now, can you imagine this? If that v vessel, if, the, if that uh, uh, bushel it is a solid material. When you did that, it would only take a few seconds for that light to be extinguished because of lack of oxygen that keeps the fire burning. And, and again, you get to the nonsensical, the, the ridiculous uh, action of uh, putting a, a lit, a fire lit candle in under uh, something that would deprive it of the oxygen that it needs 
to burn brightly. And yet people often put themselves in a place where they never get the breath of God in their life. They never get the breath of the Holy Ghost sweeping over their soul. All they get is the breezes of the world. And whatsoever it blows around, and the light is soon extinguished. How sad that is. But there's something even more sad. Think of it like this. What happens if, and it seems to be, that, that uh, bushel is a bushel basket made out of basket material? What do you suppose would happen if you put a small torch underneath such a vessel. Well, I would think that it would catch fire. And I would think that it would burn the bushel. And I would think that if someone didn't stop the uh, the burning of the bushel quickly, I, it would catch fire in, into the house and, and it would continue, if not stop, till the whole house was burned down and, and the potential for destruction of a whole city block is there. The misuse of your fire. What are we doing? With our fire. Preacher, what do you mean? Well, I want you to understand a lot of people misuse their Christianity to the point that instead of doing good, it does harm. You you know what I'm talking about. Instead of doing good, it does harm. Uh, Somebody said once, if... If that's what Christianity is supposed to be, I don't want anything to do with it. Think about how many people has put their burning and shining fire, the candle, underneath such a bushel and wound up losing their children to the devil and wound up losing their family, to the world, and ultimately the devil. Think of how many people by their actions has literally destroyed the, uh, the potential of other people coming to Christ through them. Do you ever think about it that way? How are we using our, our light? Well, the, the proper use of a lit candle is to put in a place where it shines light to the world. Shines light in the darkness. And obviously that speaks of our our Christianity being used in a Christ-honoring manner. And you already know What's pleasing to God and what isn't? You know, uh, I th- there are some things that we need guidance in, obviously, but many of the very basic principles of Christianity, we already got that in us, don't we? We already know. Pastor doesn't have to tell us everything. We already know. Because God has put it in our, in our hearts. What are we doing with our, our fire? God wants us to use it in a right way, in a good way. And let us choose to do that. Secondly, what are we doing with our focus? Now, this thought arises from verses number 34 and 35. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is is single, 
Now, just at face value, for instance, you already know thine eye, one eye already is single. It's already one eye. And the other eye is already single. It's, it's one eye. If, thy, if thine eye is, is single, so what does he, what, what is he, he giving us? Thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Here's what you obviously uh, can see already. Uh, the Lord wants us to understand uh, and, and ask this question. What are we doing with our, our focus? Obviously, when he said, if thine eye be single, he's talking about looking in one direction, looking in the right direction. Uh, you know, somebody that has very difficult, uh, very difficulty with, with seeing, uh, it's, it's dangerous. They can walk into things and uh, step where they should not step. And sometimes we that have... Uh, 2020 vision do that. But someone that has poor eyesight or no eyesight, they, it's very dangerous. And, and they need assistance and they need help. And hence you have the, the cane uh, of the blind man and you have the seeing eye dogs and you have all those wonderful helps uh, available because of the danger of not being able to see. Now, just as literal eyesight guides our body, whatever we focus on spiritually and emotionally becomes that which directs us and it becomes that which controls us. So the question, what are we doing with our our focus. What are we focusing on? Is it something that will build our Christian faith? The word of God uses it this way, edify, build up. Is, is what we are focusing on, uh, is it something that will, will build our Christian faith? Or is it something that will Tear it down and destroy it. Uh, is it something that will destroy the victorious life that the Lord has promised we can have? What are, what are we doing with our, with our focus? Uh, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28, you might remember the story uh, they, God was going to give them the promised land. And uh, in, in preparation for entering into the promised land, he sent 12 spies uh, represented from each of the 12 tribes. Two of those were Caleb and Joshua. He sent them into the promised land to spy out the land and bring back a report. And they brought back some miraculously grown uh, plentiful fruits of the land. But 10 of those spies said, look, I don't think we can take this land. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw the inhabitants of that land and they're, they're a lot taller than we are. As a matter of fact, they're just about like giants when we stand alongside of them. And my, if you saw their chariots, uh, if you saw their weaponry, uh, he, they, they come back and said, we are agreed, 10 out of 12, we are agreed that we, we cannot take that land. And only two out of the ten were willing to believe God and step out into the promised land by faith. Caleb and Joshua. <laughs> but here's what the scripture said of those ten. It said they discouraged the heart of their brethren. 
how are we using our focus? Does, are we focusing on the negative when we should focus on the positive? Are, are we focusing on the potential of defeat instead of the probability of victory? And why do I say victory? Because God said you can't have victory. God said I'm going to send you over there and you're going to whip the socks off of those Canaanites and all those ites and you're going to take that land. What are we doing with our focus? What are we focusing on? Oh, my land. Let me, let me tell you a story that uh, I heard many years ago uh, uh, when I was taking my early biblical training in, in the ministry. Someone told us a story that a missionary had related. And uh, I don't remember the field that the missionary was in. Uh, but anyway, uh, they were a, a native type people that he was ministering to. And one of his converts came to him one day and said, Preacher, said, uh, I'm in a mess. Said, uh, I've got two dogs living inside me. And said, they're always fighting. And, and one of those dogs wants to be a good dog and do good things. And the other one wants to be a, a mean dog and do mean things. And the wise preacher said, well, uh, they're always fighting which dog wins. And the young man thought of it and said, the one that I feed the most. What are we doing with our, our focus? What are we feeding the most? Be nourished up, the Bible says, in words of faith. What are we, what are we doing with our, our focus? For instance, what is our focus on Sunday? On the Lord's Day, what is our focus? Really, what is our focus? <laughs> a dear old pastor friend of mine doesn't pastor anymore, but after his Sunday services one day, one of the, one of the folks said to him, said, Pastor, I didn't get a thing out of service today. And the wise pastor said, well, did you bring anything to put anything in to serve us today? <laughs> I mean, what did you come to the service today to focus on? Did, did you come to focus on, on Christ and the glories of, of our God and the furtherance of the gospel and the, uh, the furtherance of the kingdom and, and the, in the local church? Or did we come to focus on something to pick at? What do we focus on Sunday? What do we focus on right now? But I wish he'd hurry up and get done. I don't blame you. Sometimes I wish I'd hurry up and get done. But the point is, what are we focusing on? And then what we focus on Monday through Saturday. Oh, well, what's our focus Monday through Saturday? Now, we're right down where rubber meets the road, aren't we? Well, what is our focus Monday through, through Saturday? There's a hymn in our book that's entitled, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full His wonderful face. May I suggest that we focus on him who has focused his all on you and I and provided a way that we can go to heaven. 
with his suffering and death on the cross of Calvary. Lastly, I'll bring the service to close in just a matter of a few moments. What are we doing with our Father? Look at the text once more in verse number 36. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Now, my thought, what are we doing with our Father comes from this statement. If thy whole body therefore be full of light. You already know that Jesus is the light of the world. You already know that. And you already know that, that we are to catch his light and become light bearers ourselves. We, we, we already know that. So my question is, uh, are we absorbing the light of, of God and of Christ in our life? On, on a regular basis, are we, are we absorbing the light? You know, uh, you can put a, a uh, you can put blinds up over your windows at home, can't you? And it limits the incoming uh, of light and sun, doesn't it? Well, you can open them up, and more light and sun and warmth can come in, but do we keep the blinds pulled so tightly that the Father's light doth not warm our soul and direct our life? Uh, I was away this week at a, at a preacher's meeting and had the joy of preaching uh, to a bunch of preachers. It was a good time. One of the pastors, uh, in bringing a message which he really didn't even title, but he told the story of how he and his wife would always gather the children around the table. And at the table, they would have table talks. And uh, dad would involve himself in the lives of the children with questions and answers. And uh, mom would and dad would uh, uh, spread the gospel light and tell the children God's will for them and, and uh, how that he wanted to direct their lives. And he talked about what a tremendous help that's been in his home. And then he made this statement, and I think it's echoed right here at, at NBC. And sadly, it's repeated probably about everywhere in our day and time. If we've done a study, I wonder how many families eat together at the table. I wonder if maybe dad or maybe just mom's left there and the child is allowed to grab a meal, grab a bite, go to the room, be on their phone or their computer. I, I, I wonder, I'm not asking for anyone to publicly, but, but I, I, I do know this, that the day of 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 Christianity being able to be triumphed at the table is about gone. And the table talk, the spiritual talk, the sharing and caring with the kids, and I admit that I have failed in this, not in eating together, but in, in communicating what I... Uh, I need to communicate. But I wonder about our table talks. I wonder, families, if we aren't, we're getting too far from the, 
the Father, even at the time when we've got the greatest opportunity to reinforce our Christian faith with our kids and our family around the table. I almost want to preach that man's message. I, I wonder if we couldn't commit to triumph around the table and use that time for spiritual purposes where there's prayer and Bible discussion and not gossip about the church and the preacher, but constructive input and talk about what God would have us, one another, to do with our lives. What are we doing with the Heavenly Father? Are we having any listening to the Father at the table talk? Are we listening to any words of wisdom? If you're here today and you're not saved, could I invite you to boldly come, signaling to everybody around that you're coming to the God of heaven and you're receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're happy to do so because he loves you so much you want people to know that you love him back. Would you come and have a talk with Jesus? We'd be happy to show you in the Bible how you can be saved and how you can know it. That's what the Lord said about light and darkness. What are we going to do with our light, our fire? Let's stay.